So in a previous video, I created these images on the screen. I created a rectangle, a circle, and some text. In this segment, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to import a vector file and how to manipulate a vector file. So I'll go up over here on the left, hit File, I do File Import. Then I go ahead and I look for the file that I want to import. In this case, I'm pretty sure it's on my desktop. I'm looking for the Radian logo, and there it is, Radian logo new. It's a .ai file, an Adobe Illustrator file. And notice here, as I go to do my import, I get a list of different types of files that I'm able to import here. In this case, um, a .ai is in the list, as are these other files. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the Radian logo. Again, it's an Illustrator file. I hit Open. It should put it on the screen. Yep, it did. It put it up in the corner. Uh, that's okay. I can simply go ahead. It's already selected when it comes in. I hit center. puts it in the center of my screen. Again, and in, by the way, to move in and out, the way I'm able to zoom in and out of just using the, the mouse wheel. Let me move this rectangle out of the way. I'll make it a little smaller. Grab the corner, push it out of the way. I'm going to grab the circle and push it out of the way. Let's push it to the side. Oops. Side, this text out of here that I was working with earlier. And okay, there's the Radian logo. Now, it's just um, may or may not be the size that I want. It really doesn't matter. Again, I can manipulate it, the size of it, by grabbing a corner. Or as shown in other videos, I can go into this transform icon. And if I wanted to uh, change size, by scale and I definitely when I bring in a logo I want to make sure I've got uh, the by scale selected so if I change one axis it uh, proportionally changes the other so let's just go ahead and make it a 40 millimeter along the x-axis and then you see that the y-axis changed accordingly by the way I uh, mentioned in an earlier video that you could select between millimeters and inches I'll show you that here since we are talking about millimeters and Many of you probably are interested in inches. I just go to my file area here, hit system parameters, and then basically the very first selection I have available to me is to select inches or millimeters. I'm going to go ahead and continue to work in millimeters because I'm just more used to that. Just hit cancel. I don't want to change anything. But I did want to show you how to do that in case you were wondering. Okay. I'm going to put that away. So filling your unfilled vector image, which is what this is. And by the way, uh, everything you're going to be doing, uh, most of what you're going to be doing uh, for logos and marks and all that, uh, when you bring in images, they're going to be vector images. You can bring in bitmaps, uh, and we'll show you in a different video how to do that. It's, um, that would be useful for you know, printing a picture or lasering a picture onto something, maybe wood or onto a coated metal card or something like that, or even on metal, but whatever, whatever. You, but it's a whole different discussion, and so I'm going to save that for a different video. Because 99% of what most of my customers are going to do, they're going to have, uh, they're going to want to fill a vector file. Now ours is pretty simple. It's just basically our logo. A lot of logos, a lot of images are much more complex than this. Um, but I'll be able to kind of show you everything you need, the basics you need to know. So filling this is pretty straightforward. I've got it selected. It comes in as one item. And you notice over here it says logo. Um, and it comes, comes in as one item. I can go ahead and hatch it like I was able to do with my uh, shapes and text in a previous video. I'm going to leave the outline on. I'm just going to go ahead and hatch it at like 0.05 millimeters. And all that is, again, the hatching is the distance. It's telling me the distance between the lines of my fill. And as soon as I hit apply, notice that the image gets, everything gets dark. I'm going to shut that for a second. Now, <clears throat> sometimes your image comes in and you want to break it apart or you want to, maybe I want to hatch one area of the logo different than another. Maybe I want to laser one area different than the other because maybe in my end result I want to say I wanted to have Part of my image dark and part of my image light, uh, maybe part of the image shiny, it just kind of depends on what you're trying to do. 
So what I'm going to be able to do is, if I, as I've selected this, and by the way, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the hatching. Okay, get back to where I was before. Now, when I go ahead and select this, I can go over here to edit, and I can uncombine. And when I uncombine, what I'm doing is I'm kind of breaking this apart. And notice now, I don't just have three or four items over here. I've got a whole bunch more. So each one of these elements within my Hi, my logo is now selectable and as such fillable separately. Same thing down here. So what I'm going to do is I actually want my, in this case, I want Radian to be one fill and I'm going to have Laser Systems to be another. So now that I've broken it apart, I can take all these elements here, select them, and I can go back and I can combine them. So now I've combined all I've got combined all the letters in laser systems as one element. So now if I go to hatch, that will be hatchable as one element. And I'm gonna go ahead and use a different pen than I was I'm gonna do on radian. I'm gonna use pen two. So now notice when it fills, you see it as blue. Now I'm going to do the same thing up here with Radian. I'm going to go ahead and select all the letters in Radian. And I'm going to go ahead and combine. Now I can go ahead and, oops, not that one. I'm going to go ahead and hatch those together. I say hatch, I don't know five, it's just random. I'll leave it pen one, apply. Now notice that I've got my logo with two different uh, with the ability to to uh, have the radian and the laser systems portion of my logos portions of my logo to be uh, different colors so to speak now they're not going to be black and blue um, they may be black uh, it may be blue but that's not the intent of what these colors are showing what these colors are showing is basically different layers to my job and so these colors over here on the right we call them pens uh, they're basically job colors so for uh, these different elements. I can set the laser parameters for each one of these pens differently. So for instance, uh, if I wanted to make the radian portion of this kind of dark, I know from experience that if I want to heavy engrave that, I can do some, uh, I can manipulate the parameters to be uh, as I'm showing here. And this should give me a relatively dark mark especially if I want to modify the stainless. I'll just keep that. And what I've, what I've got here is I've got the ability to select the number of times I can repeat my engraving of the particular mark. I've got the speed that I can manu maneuver or speed that I can manipulate the laser spot moving over the surface. I've got my power, rel it's relative power relative to the power available on the laser. In this case, I'm connected to a 30 watt 3D radiant fiber laser. And then I've got my frequency, which is the repetition rate of the of pulses that are being applied. I also can uh, go ahead here and I can do pulse width selection. It defaults to 200 nanoseconds. And regardless, for pen one, I'm set up with these parameters and it's going to produce a relatively dark mark. Uh, especially if I go back over here to my hatch and tighten up my hatch a little bit, I know that with these parameters, I will get a dark mark. Now, I also know that from experience, and we'll explain all that later, um, that I can create uh, lighter marks or white marks in some cases. And so in this case, I want to create a relatively light or white mark for my laser systems. So I'm going to go ahead to pen two here. I'm going to select some parameters that I know will be conducive to a white mark. And notice that I'm moving, I'm doing just one pass, uh, indicated here, and by my repeats, I'm moving the spot at 2,000 millimeters per second. I've got 40% power, considerably lower than I had set for my other pen, for pen one, and I've increased my frequency to 100 kilohertz. I'm going to go ahead and leave the pulse width where it is. It's really um, kind of irrelevant uh, for this discussion. I'll just leave it at the default when I hit apply. So now, if I were to go to mark this right now, I would be able to generate a darker area for radian and a lighter or almost white mark on stainless. I'm talking about 
uh, for laser systems. And uh, again, I can take those elements, if I choose to, and combine them together. Once I do that, I'm not going to be able to uncombine them and still have the, I'm not going to have the uh, ability to manipulate the, these elements separately. So I'm going to leave it separated for now for the sake of, of this discussion. So I'm back, back out. My other elements are still here. Uh, notice over now when I select this, I've got two elements selected. Um, and then the other three elements are still, still on my screen. I could go ahead, if I chose to right now, I could go ahead and mark this by selecting it. Um, and I could go ahead and mark this together with it if I selected both of them. And basically, the system will mark whatever I have selected, and it will mark them in the order shown here on the left. Again, my other uh, functionality that applies to my text and my other images, such as um, my transform functionality, for instance, for rotation, can still apply to my vector images. I can also do things like I manipulate uh, the image but with some other icons here. I can do mirroring, various directions, X and Y. I can multiply. Um, for instance, here, if I wanted to multiply, let's say I wanted to create an array of these, uh, put some separation between them, nope, not that much. Let's say five millimeter separation between my images. And go ahead and it's bound to that deviation. I hit apply. And now I've generated a two by two matrix of my logo. Uh, it's still selected, so if I hit it again, guess what? It just did it again and now multiplies it again. I'm going to go ahead and shut that off. I'm going to back up, I'm going to undo it, I'm going to undo it again, and I'm back to my single image.